Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Sundin. A lot of folks think you gotta get to Red Lake right away, early in December, and that's not a bad idea, but we waited. We're past all the prime time now, and there are still lots of people out here fishing, and the word on the street is that the fishing has gone to a nocturnal bite, but it doesn't have to be. We're doing things just a little bit differently. If you get out away from the pack, you can get some walleyes, even midwinter, later season walleyes. Stay with us, you won't wanna miss this one. As soon as I dropped it back down, he got a hold of it. There we got him. I got that one. I think we got a perch coming or a small walleye. Let me tell you something about that bait. That thing has proven itself to me so many times. There's a start for us right there. I got that foo flyer on there. And that bait has really gotten to be one of my confidence baits. In the last couple of years, wherever I go, that thing has helped me catch walleyes, perch too for that matter. That one I'm gonna let go, he's a little small, but he's got me started. What I really love about that bait is I can cover water with it when I have to, but I can slow down and stop and I can just let that fish make up his mind to come and take it when he needs to. I can use it aggressively when I have to. I can use it as a dead stick bait when I have to. I can let the minnow do all the work if I want. It's just a really versatile bait. I'm gonna get that thing strung back up and go down there and see if I can do that again. hold of it. I was just wagging that thing up and down. You got a hold of it. One thing about these baits, you don't have to set the hook just because you've got a bite. I'll tell you why here in just a second. Let's, oh, you know what? That feels like a good one too. In fact, <laughs> I'm a little suspicious about this one. I believe when I get to the end of this, I'm going to see a northern pike. There we go, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with bringing a fish in like that once in a while. That's a nice pike, he got it hooked right on the edge of the lips. You know, something interesting, the nicer sized pike, they come up and punch that thing, they grab a hold of it, and they rarely get it down inside of their stomach and break your line. It's usually the small ones that do that. That's a pretty nice fish, kind of fun for something to do. I'm gonna slide him back in real quick. There you go. One thing about these baits, you want to be careful when you go to set the hook. They work the best when you've got a whole minnow. And just because that fish is down there biting doesn't mean I have to get him right away. I got all the time in the world. He's eating that minnow. There we go. Okay. You see that? You can just wait them out. It's the easiest way in the world to catch a walleye, and it goes against everything. There we go. What's wrong with that fish? Got that foo flyer right on the edge. It goes against everything that everybody wants to do. You get a bite, and you feel like you should jerk right away. But the beauty of these baits is that it presents a whole minnow. And when those fish are in the mood to have a whole minnow like that, they need a little bit of time to come up. They get it by the tail, they'll inch their way up. It takes them three or four times and you actually feel that as they're going. You'll feel it thump and then you'll feel it let loose for a second and thump again, let loose and thump. And as they do that, they're working their way towards the hook and then there's a period where it just levels out. It's just flat, even pressure and that's the time. That's when you set the hook and you'll get them. There's nothing wrong with that. That, in fact, I think that one's gonna probably be part of the fish fry tonight. So we'll put him in here. Oh, I just went loose on that. Oh, there he is. 
Oh, you know what? That's more fun. That's a blast. Look at that. That's one thing that's nice about having that slick jig down there. For some reason, that bait attracts some of those bigger sized fish. I got a feeling that that one right there is a little bit over 17 inches for red leg. But that's kind of a nice, that's a really a good, fun fish to catch. And I won't mind coming back and catching him again a different time. There we go. Every once in a while, you get one of those fish that just has to stay on the bottom. Oh, there we go. That looks like another eater size. That one, we got him on the slick jig. And see what's really interesting about that jig. Let me get this out of my hand for a second. What's really interesting about that jig is the shape of it. It wants to sit nose down. And what I do, what anybody can do is turn that knot backwards and when that hits the water and drops to the bottom what I was doing with that is just tickling the bottom like this just hitting that and the minnow sits up and that kick up a little bit of dust with it grab a hold of a fish and sometimes the slick jig picks up a fish that the foo flyer misses not always this is one of the baits when the fish want this they come in and attack it really violently. It doesn't take much brain power to be able to catch a fish on when they're in the mood for it. It's a great double whammy, having both down at the same time like that. Doesn't feel too bad. You know what's really interesting about where we're at? Look at that, he came up uh, pretty quick. There's not a soul around us right now today. We didn't come out in trucks. We didn't follow the plowed road. We came on snowmobiles. You could come out here and you could fish with the crowd and for a long time that was probably a really good idea. But coming out and just getting some fish for a fish fry now I'm getting a little close already, so I'm gonna let that one back down the hole while I'm thinking about it. But what we're doing here is just getting away from where everybody's been. And it's really easy to think about Red Lake as a big lake with no structure, but it's got all these small rock piles and little rock dots. Some of them are hardly any bigger than the fish house that we're fishing in. You can find them in the summertime. Some of them are on the charts if they're bigger ones, or sometimes we just drill holes and stumble into them. But what happens on a lot of these isolated structures is there will be a dozen fish or 15 fish that just kind of mill around in a area and so even though we're not on that hot early season bite we're still able to come out here and pick off fish just because we staked out a little bit of territory that we don't have a lot of competition here so if there's a smaller group of fish we can get a high percentage of that group of fish and then tomorrow maybe we'll be a half a mile down the shore or even more but what we're doing is picking unfished territory kind of going through straining out some of the smaller spots and taking what we get and so far it's working out to be really good and plus there's a lot of peace and quiet when you do it this way oh, there we go. nothing wrong with that oh okay perfect uh oh you know what that feels just about right too he came up that one was a little more gentle than some of them. There he is. Look at that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what? What I'm seeing written all over that one, you're allowed three fish up here, and I think that one is just about perfect for to make number three for me. We've let a few fish go, got a couple for a meal. Now here's something to think about. Red Lake, we're past the main bite but get yourself a couple of new baits, come out and do a little bit of exploring. There's still a month of walleye fishing season coming out here, and if you go out and do a little bit of looking around, you don't have to be a victim of the prime time being over with. There's still plenty of good walleye fishing to do and plenty of good eating. For Fish Ed, I'm Jeff Sundin. Join us again next week. Bye.